Oklahoma State is hosting the Texas Longhorns in a Big 12 matchup and what's definitely going to be a showcase of elite quarterback talent. Um, both of these teams are coming off of closed games last week. Texas won a closed game against Iowa State, and um, Oklahoma State lost a heartbreaker at TCU. But, Drew, kicking it to you, we know Quinn Ewers is the centerpiece for this Texas offense, and, you know, they found ways to win without him, but having him back has been essential for uh, this team's success. So, you know, what has that been like for them to get Quinn Ewers back? Yeah, Quinn Ewers definitely gives that team a new dynamic on offense in terms of just having that downfield passing threat. I think he's really, really good, especially when he gets time to make those downfield passes, which Texas hasn't really been an explosive team for a long time other than B. John Robinson breaking free and taking long runs to the house. But with Quinn Ewers giving Texas a legitimate passing option, it allows them to be able to set up the run game a little bit better as uh, opposing teams' defenses are going to have to take into account and respect Texas's passing game, which allows B. John Robinson to run a little bit uh, more free. You know, teams aren't able to load the box like they have been in uh, years past. So Texas has put up some points this year. They did have a little bit of a struggle win against Iowa State, but I still think it's a good win because at the end of the day, it was a conference game. Iowa State's a respectable opponent regardless of their record, and Texas found a way to win, in which most cases in past years, those are the kinds of games that Texas loses. So if I'm a Texas fan, I'm just happy to uh, get out of there with a win. And, you know, you compare that to Oklahoma State, who's coming off a heartbreaking loss to TCU, who they let come back. And that's just so demoralizing to have a two two possession lead in a conference game as game as big as that and to blow it at the end. Trust me, I'm a Georgia fan. I know how that feels. And I'm sure Oklahoma State's going to feel it this week through practice. I mean, that's just not something you shake off instantly. But they're going to have to to play this Texas team and play them at a high level, and that's what they're going to have to do to beat this Texas team. Now, another thing I want to point out is Oklahoma State's defense has just been not nowhere near as good as they've been in years past. 110th in total defense, giving up about 301 passing yards per game. That's very concerning for me. Quinn Ewers is definitely a quarterback that is capable of lighting up bad defenses. So, Aiden, you know, we talk about this Oklahoma State defense not having Jim Knowles anymore. What do you think Oklahoma State's defense is going to have to do to really limit this Texas's offense? Yeah, it starts with the D-line and getting pressure on the quarterback. And when you when you talk about this Oklahoma State defense, that's really the, the number one thing that pops out is that D-line. Last year, they led the nation in sacks among every team in college football. But like you mentioned, their defensive backfield is absolute Swiss cheese. They were getting torched in the TCU game. Um, the yards after catch from the TCU receivers was – it's unacceptable – um, the Oklahoma State DB has got to do a better job of rallying to the football and making tackles in the open field. You know, there was too many missed tackles in that game. But in, in my opinion, in this game, whenever you're talking about a Sarkeesian ran offense with Quinn Ewers, a guy who can throw the ball deep, like you mentioned, even when he's pressured, this is one thing that stands out to me about Quinn Ewers real quick. Even when he's pressured, he has the pocket presence to keep his eyes downfield and, and be able to make a throw. Even while he's getting hit, it's very impressive, especially for a young quarterback. And when you have a guy like that, you're going to have to be able to stay locked on those receivers. Even if he does, you know, get out the pocket or even if you do think he's down, you're going to have to stay focused on your assignment if you're a DB because you don't know. Quinn Ewers could, you know, launch the ball 30 yards down the field when when you think he's been sacked. Yeah, and – like I said earlier, I really like how Quinn Ewers has really stepped up this year as a quarterback. Uh, very inexperienced coming into the season, but he really opened people's eyes in that Alabama game, approving that he can be among, amongst the top quarterbacks in the entire country. And especially on the road like this, I, if you really can find ways to throw the ball on the road, I mean, it just opens up your offense so much. You see a lot of teams will go on the road, and then the crowd will kind of have an impact, and they'll kind of throw off uh, the passing game for a lot of these teams, and then the teams kind of get limited to just kind of running up the middle, running outside, and teams can stack the box out like that. So under no circumstance can Texas uh, get put in that situation where Oklahoma State's able to load the box up. But enough about Texas. Moving on to Oklahoma State, primarily their offense. Oklahoma State's offense has been really impressive this year. Spencer Sanders, everyone knows who he is. He's done a really good job, averaging nearly 300 passing yards per game. So, Aiden, you've watched some Oklahoma State film. What about this Oklahoma State offense has really impressed you the most? Yeah, Spencer Sanders is by far and away the best player on their team. His ability to you know get out the pocket, escape, and run, and then also throw the ball down the field, and, and also his poise really stands out to me. Um, He's a dominant player, but as far as the offense as a whole, their ability to script plays and the way that they put points on the board in the first quarter in the first half, it, it's its really amazing. And they've beaten every team, I think it's by 17 or more or 14 or more uh, going into that TCU game. So this offense 
puts up points. They really do a good job of using play action to make DBs bite, and then they'll you know kill you down the field deep, which is similar to what Texas does. But when I look at uh, this offense compared to Texas's offense, like I just mentioned, they do a really good job of scripting plays and scoring early. But a, a lot of times they don't come out in the second half with that same uh, firepower. And that's opposite to how Texas plays, where Texas, their, their coaching staff does a great job of making adjustments in the second half. Um, their offense scores most of their points. I think they're ranked top in the nation in third quarter points, which just tells you um, that their coaches are making great adjustments during halftime. So when I look at this game, the Oklahoma State offense is going to have to be able to adapt to what Texas is doing. Texas is going to have better athletes like you know, every year they're one of the best recruiting classes in the nation, and this year it's so different. The defense that they're putting out, if you're just looking at rankings, you know, they're monsters, all 11 of them. And they're going to they're gonna be able to put things together, this coaching staff, and they're going to be adapting. So after Oklahoma State, you know, gets punched in the mouth, what are their coaches going to do to be able to, you know, find a way to get in the end zone? Yeah, and this is a really big game. Of course, Oklahoma State and Texas both have one conference loss, so – you know, a loss here really puts whoever loses behind the eight ball in terms of making it to the Big 12 championship. And I don't think any of these teams can really have any more errors going forward, especially if they want to make playoffs. Now, Texas, I think, is going to be uh, almost impossible to make the playoffs. I don't think a two-loss Big 12 team is going to get into the playoffs this year. So, But, you know, the best chance they have is obviously run the table, win the Big 12 championship, and just see what other teams do. Uh, obviously, the Pac-12, there's, it's almost like the Big 12 and the Pac-12 are just almost going to devour each other in terms of the top teams are just kind of going to beat, beat each other up so bad to the point where these teams don't even make the playoffs from both the Big 12 and the Pac-12. Uh, Oklahoma State obviously still has playoff chances, but they can't. They have to run the table as well. So definitely a big game. Now, in terms of predictions go, Texas is six-point favorites. They actually opened up at three and have moved to six. A lot of people are high on Texas, and I don't blame them. I think Texas has looked much improved, especially getting Quinn Ewers back. They look like a Texas team that a lot of people have been expecting them to be, uh, a Texas team that's winning games they should, you know, supposed to be. Obviously, that loss to Texas Tech, no Quinn Ewers, tough loss. Uh, Texas Tech is a little bit improved as well. I think Texas is going to get the job done here, though. I think Oklahoma State's a little demoralized, like I said, from that TCU loss. Uh, Oklahoma State's defense hasn't really proved to me that I could trust them in big games, especially going up against a high-powered offense like Texas. And I think Texas has just too many weapons on offense. Not even We've talked a lot about Quinn Ewers, but B. John Robinson, one of the best running backs in college football. We barely mentioned his name. Roshan Johnson, uh, Texas' second running back, is not far behind B. John Robinson. He's still probably a top-ten running back in the country as well. So just tons and tons of weapons on Texas' offense. I don't know if Oklahoma State... I don't think I could trust their defense enough. I think Oklahoma State will put up points. I think Texas is going to put up a little bit more. In terms of the six points, I think Texas wins this game by more than six points. I don't think this game is really going to be a nail-biter coming down to the wire. I think it'll probably be a little competitive in the first half, but I could just see a scenario where Texas kind of runs away with this one in the fourth quarter and maybe wins this game by a couple scores. With all that being said, I'm taking Texas, and they're covering the six points. Yeah, Mike Gundy is a great coach, and Oklahoma State coming off a heartbreaking loss where TCU had the most fans that had been in that stadium ever at like 50,000. So it was a very emotional, huge game, and, you know, they, they got embarrassed. They blew a huge lead, and he's not going to let his guys, you know, you know, turn, you know, tuck their tails and, and run away. They're going to come and punch his Texas team in the mouth. They have them at home. The line moving from three to six. It does alarm me a little, but I wonder if Texas is a little bit overvalued now uh, with them being at six points. And, you know, I really do trust this Oklahoma State offense. You know, like I mentioned, I think they won every single game before that TCU loss by 17 or more, which is unbelievable. Ohio State's the only other team that to have done that. So that offense is going to score. It's just a matter of can they force three instead of seven in the red zone and can they get stops? And Oklahoma State's D-line is amazing. They're going to have to be able to get pressure. Um, this Texas team is a good team. They're a great team. But Oklahoma State coming off a loss, an emotional game, they're going to be taking this game like it's their national championship. So give me Oklahoma State. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I just want to apologize. We haven't been uploading as frequent as we used to. Um, I've had a busy week. I actually just celebrated a birthday a week ago. And, you know, this week's just been kind of busy for me. I actually went to the Georgia game on Saturday, so and I wasn't home Sunday. So I have not been able to be here and upload a bunch of videos uh, but we're going to be uploading a little bit more this week. If you haven't already, please leave a thumbs up and share the video and also subscribe and hit the notification bell. All of those things helps us out tremendously. And, and we really can't do this without y'all supporting us. So 
we just want to appreciate y'all that do support us and do watch our videos and subscribe but that's going to be it for this video guys we'll see you in the next one